so good. Hi guys, my name is Magali and if it's your first time on my channel then welcome and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I make regular videos on beauty, fashion and lifestyle. Today is going to be another monthly favorites video because I do one of these every month and it's a nice way to just sit and chat and check in with you all and tell you about the different things that I've been loving throughout the month. So we have just a couple of days left in the month of June which is kind of crazy because with the end of this month it also marks the end of the first half of 2020. I could say stuff like where did the time go because it feels like simultaneously like time has passed really quickly and also time has crawled like how is that really possible because it's got to be one or the other right <laughs> i'm just really really thankful that i am at home i am safe i have my loved ones around me and all of that stuff wherever you're watching from i hope you guys are also doing good i hope you're safe and i just hope you're adjusting to your surroundings in a good way so this time i thought i would restructure my monthly favorites a little like there's not going to be a very big change or anything but in my head it used to always be like beauty and then non-beauty stuff like i used to try to feature some makeup and then i used to talk about some other non makeup -y things i realized like i'm not really wearing that much of makeup like i have some cute makeup on right now if you want details go into the description but on the whole of course most days i am barefaced and so my favorites are going to holistically reflect all of my interests and all of the things i discovered and enjoyed be it a hot drink be it some skincare and then at the end we are also going to talk about movies and tv shows so in the month of june i actually restarted vlogging from home again after a really long time i have a separate vlog channel and i have two vlogs live in june so you can watch them over there if you would like and if you've already seen those vlogs then there are going to be a couple of repeat things that i've already shown and mentioned over there because i'm just enjoying them so much they had to be a part of this video as well starting with a hot drink so i am a chai person through and through just a black tea with some milk preferably soy milk but i'm not too fussy and a little bit of sugar makes me very happy and I consume a lot of it. The more I'm at home, the more I drink and I usually have at least four mugs a day, if not more. But sometimes I like to vary and try some different things just for the novelty of it because everybody gets bored. And this is a coffee drink that I have been loving. It is from Nescafe and it's the Nescafe Mild and Smooth Latte in Caramel flavor. So I actually went to Malaysia towards the end of 2019 and there are vlogs on this channel also if you guys are new. I ended up picking up one of these Nescafe caramel lattes when I was there because it's a foreign item and I just really ended up loving it so much. It's got coffee and as the name says it's mild and smooth so it's not like super strong but you can definitely get the flavor of coffee also and it doesn't feel like too diluted. It is a ready drink so it has the coffee, it has the flavoring and it has the milk and the sugar all in there all you have to do is just pour it out into hot water stir it and enjoy it actually tastes like something i would get outside in a cafe and since the first lockdowns have started i have not really had any kind of cafe drinks i've ordered food a few times but drinks are something like a little luxury that i slightly miss and this gives me those cafe feels at home it's really tasty and if you guys are looking for a little bit of a fancier tastier coffee to have at home that is so easy to make i would recommend it so satisfying even if i'm going to start like sweating right now from having hot coffee it was worth it so currently where we are at the end of june 2020 a lot of the national lockdown in india is being lifted now the exact rules will depend on what state or what city you're in but we had a few months of lockdown where we weren't really allowed to move and now those guidelines are being loosened and if you go out on the street also for any reason you'll see that people are moving about more businesses are opening up more but it's important to note that we didn't really manage to contain the disease and the infection numbers and the death numbers 
are kind of increasing every single day so it's still really important to be careful it's still really important to take all of the vigilance that you have taken so far and, and if you belong to any one of the businesses that is opening up their offices of course you guys will kind of have to go to work but if not if you're like working from home please try to stay at home as much as possible and avoid going out unless you absolutely need it because it's all up to us now to kind of protect ourselves and try to prevent the spread of this disease there is no cure for coronavirus yet but obviously we have all learned that there are so many things that we can do to mitigate our risk of getting it that includes social distancing washing your hands using hand sanitizer when you're outside and of course wearing masks so that brings me to my second favorite these cute little cloth masks now i thought for a minute is it appropriate to share masks in a favorites video because it feels kind of grim right like this is something that we need and it's not like a fun and frivolous thing but then why not share it right in my vlog i discussed how i stopped using like those disposable masks that i was because it wasn't going to be practical and was creating a lot of waste and i switched to these cloth masks i got these on amazon i'm gonna leave the link below they are available in really cute fabric prints i actually bought two sets of three so i have six right now and these are three layered masks they're made of cotton they are breathable but they'll still give you a good amount of protection they're not like medical grade or anything but these are good enough for everyday life pretty much so they have an elastic and when you put this on the shape is actually really good because it guards like the top part of your nose and then it also kind of covers your whole jawline area because your nose and mouth are the main regions that need to be covered up when you guys are wearing a mask i felt a little bit shallow searching for masks that looked pretty also like this that had cute bright colors and prints but i think there's nothing wrong with it because if this is going to be part of our lifestyle for the next few months i just wanted some cute masks that will make me feel a little bit good about wearing them like you can have functional things that also look aesthetically pleasing they are not mutually exclusive just like you can wear boring clothes but you probably wear pretty or fun clothes because they make you feel good so these pretty masks also make me feel nice and one more thing that i wanted to mention to you guys is please don't wear those masks that have that little respirator tab there because those masks were mainly made for pollution purposes and they are not practical at all for coronavirus because if you guys have the virus you will be expelling all of it outside i feel like not enough people are discussing that point but yeah please avoid the masks that have those circular respirators and also the fact that these are washable is obviously very nice because they're sustainable if you guys are a little bit crafty you can make masks at home from any kind of cloth that you have lying around just make a few layers there are a lot of tutorials available and by doing that you're keeping yourself safe you're keeping your community safe and you're also like keeping the oceans a little bit cleaner because the disposable masks are all being dumped in the oceans ultimately like if you're a doctor or a nurse you need the proper disposables but most of us don't need the disposable surgical masks if you're just going down to get bhaji or get our parcels or whatever and now i have like a skin care and a hair care thing let's collectively call them self care i guess and coincidentally these are both lavender fragrance which is cool i think because I used to really be into aromatherapy at one time. I don't take it that seriously anymore, but lavender is one of my favorite fragrances especially for relaxation and calming. So it's something that gets me in the mood to sleep and I love having a lavender pillow spray with me. This is actually something I've kind of wanted to try for a while. Hydrogel under eye masks from this Korean brand called Jejun and in this dabba you actually get quite a few of these so this will last you quite a while you also get this cool spoon and these masks are really hydrating and they moisturize your under eye area i enjoy using them in like two different instances the first is when i'm getting ready when i'm going to be putting on makeup in fact i just did that just now when i was getting ready to film this video i sat and put these under eye mask on and then kind of tried to fix my hair and make it look cute 
and I also love using these under eye gels just before going to sleep so nowadays when I get into bed sometimes I've been having just a little bit of insomnia it's been way harder to fall asleep so having these little rituals help and I just put these on once it starts like feeling a little drier that's when you remove the mask never wait for it to fully dry and usually the serum is pretty much absorbed in by then and it just kind of plumps up your under eyes and makes it all nice and moisturized and happy i also love that these hydrogel masks unlike sheet masks are completely soft and biodegradable i knew that i personally had to get lavender but there are quite a few different variants available like green tea there's rose and there might be a few more also the fragrance is very mild so if you're worried about that don't be it is not too strong at all it's just really subtle and it kind of adds to the whole experience for me and for the hair care item from Schwarzkopf, i have the oil ultime lavender and jasmine essential oil you can use this how you would use a normal hair oil before washing your hair you apply this to the root area and massage it a little bit and the whole combination of lavender and jasmine is just very very relaxing now they usually say for hair care purposes like don't sleep with oil overnight but i'm gonna make a confession and say that i sleep with oil overnight all of the time because when i have oil on my head and like i get a nice little chumpy malish then i get like the sleep of my dreams i get such a deep sleep and it's just so extra relaxed and soothe and calm this oil has been absolutely magical in that way because it also contains lavender which i already mentioned i love the fragrance of and it puts me in such like a relaxed mood the best thing about the oil is that it's not super greasy or anything it kind of just feels like a dry oil so it gives you a little bit of that shine but there's absolutely no stickiness and i have actually used this on my hair while i'm styling it also just a little bit to lay down the unruly hair like for example i put less styling product on the right side of my hair today so the left side is way more defined and kind of wavy and pretty but the right side has more frizz and i can just push in a little bit of oil which will help it stay a little neater can do the same thing for the flyaways on my head also also one of the cuter details is like though it comes with a dropper cap they give you a spray cap also so if you prefer spraying it into your hands or hair or wherever that's just handy those were pretty much all of the products that i enjoyed in june and now we're going to chat a little bit about movies and a tv show so i'm going to talk about two movies one of them i watched in june one is older but they kind of go together and they are both horror films but even if you're scared of horror films you guys hear me out so i spent my entire childhood being kind of a freddy cat and i was just really scared of horror films and i got really clingy and paranoid whenever i watched them so my mom pretty much like stopped me from watching all of the horror things as a child like she's just like no you don't watch that and i understand that fully because if i did actually watch the movies i would drive her crazier than i already did so yeah she was just trying to preserve both of our sanity but then last year at the ripe old age of 27 i said i am a grown-ass woman right now maybe i should actually see what all the fuss is about and check out all of the famous horror films and i watched a bunch of them and lo and behold i was a newly converted horror fan but the genre has a lot of crappy things also that pass for horror that are just really cheap scares jump scares and all of that maybe one day i will make a video on my all-time favorites but today i'm just going to talk about two movies why these are special are if you are kind of scared of horror films that show ghosts or supernatural any kind of like those elements with jump scares these aren't that kind of horror so anyone should be able to watch these except for like maybe young kids because they are a little bit fucked up but they are a different kind of fucked up i think there is no body horror there is no spooky stuff but they mess with your mind a little bit in a really cool way so one of the movies i watched this month was called the lodge like it just 
popped up on Amazon Prime and I was like let me see what this is because I recognize the lead actress there is a small cast but it's led by Riley Keough so I'm gonna skip telling you guys like the plot or the synopsis because that's information you can easily find online but I will tell you that it's a beautifully crafted psychological horror film there is a little bit of like past trauma and it shows the negative effects of isolation and how gaslighting can kind of affect a person's mental state. It's a very minimal and sort of bare film. There aren't too many dialogues. There is just a very simple setting, a very small cast, but it's very, very gripping. And it will probably not like frighten you when you're watching it, but it will definitely draw you in. Like I found myself really absorbed in it and Riley Keough has acted so well. Like it's very subtle acting. There is absolutely no overacting, but it's beautiful so definitely check that one out and the second horror film I have to mention is something that you guys may have already seen and probably have already heard about called Get Out it came out a few years ago now it's a film by Jordan Peele I remember being really really surprised when the film came out because Jordan Peele before horror used to be a comedian he was one half of Key and Peele and I loved their show I thought their work was pretty good and he pivoted to horror. He doesn't act in this film, but I guess he wrote and directed it. So the thing about Get Out also, I find that it's very hard to explain, or maybe I'm just not that good at explaining it. It is a horror film that's kind of about racism, but the message about racism is not overt. It looks really normal and you're like, okay, what's gonna happen? And then things take a very dark and messed up turn. And there are a lot of like metaphors in it, which you may not even like fully understand when you're first watching it i know i didn't but i would recommend like watch it first read about it watch it again it's a work of modern art and it actually deserves all of the praise that it got because it kind of shows you that people who you think are your allies and people who act all like fine and good and progressive on the surface might have a different agenda and it's just really an amazing film of course it's come to the front of my mind now because of all of the clashes that have been happening in america with black lives matter i feel like it's doubly important to watch something like get out because not only is it like a profound and like enjoyable and important film but i think there is certain media like good tv shows and good movies that will help you understand the structural problems of the world if you choose not to engage directly with news and all of that as much as you should there is entertainment media also which can help you become aware of the things around you the final favorite that i have is a tv show and it's called succession it is an hbo show and this is kind of a newer show it just wrapped up its second season and it is going to be produced further though of course now with the pandemic we don't really know when we'll get new tv oh, but that doesn't matter you have two seasons that you can binge watch succession is not really the kind of show i would generally go for but of course I am spending all my time at home and I'm consuming way more media than I usually did and I am looking for new TV shows to watch rather than just keeping on repeating my old ones and because of that I end up watching some things that I wouldn't normally. The genres are like a mix of black comedy and drama so I guess you could call it dramedy. It's not a kind of show that will make you laugh but it just centers around this really super rich family in America. They are fictional and they are billionaires and they're all profoundly messed up and they're all really really unlikable characters. I think that is like the point of it because you will love to hate them. That is part of the show. For the first half of season one I wasn't really convinced but I kept at it and I'll admit that it sort of drew me in by the time I started season two I was thinking about the show and I was not watching it I was thinking about the characters and I was thinking about what messed up things they're gonna do and this show also does have a penchant for like doing twists in the last episode of each season so season two had a pretty big twist a cliffhanger and it was really delicious and for an HBO show there is of course explicit language because that's something you can expect but there is a surprising lack of smashing on screen 
which I was pleasantly surprised by. And I think it's actually nice to watch an HBO show where you are not bombarded with like a sex scene every five or ten minutes because those shows exist. They are good, but you're watching them and suddenly it's like sex scene. So this is not like that. And it might be something fun that you could watch with the entire family. Except if there are small kids, probably don't let them see this. But otherwise, it's soapy and like a guilty pleasure and I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. So with that, I'm gonna wrap up my June favorites. There were very few things, but I talked way too much. So I think things kind of balanced and evened out. If you discovered something new and interesting in the month of June, I would love it if you leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and press the bell icon to be notified when I publish new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.